two hours west of Johannesburg, just outside the town of Rustenburg in the northwest province, lies the Royal Bafokeng Stadium in a village called Pukeng. This is one of the 2010 Soccer World Cup stadiums. It is the only one outside of a major South African city and the only one that is owned by a rural African community. How, you ask, did this stadium get to be here? as we say in Sitsuana. My name is Enke Pizue, and I'm a member of the Royal Bafokin Nation. I'm going to take you on a journey through our kingdom. This journey will show you how this state-of-the-art stadium is but one of the many things that reflect our enterprising and innovative spirit. This journey will also show the values we inherited from our forefathers, the spirit of embracing challenges facing them head on, and dreaming of a bright, very bright future for our children. Where I'm standing today is Kale village, which is where I was born, bred, and somewhat educated. It is also where two branches of my family tree lie. The Pichuas on the one side, and the Sinne on the other side. Across the road, is my grandmother's house. And up the road is most of my family, and this is where my parents live. Yeah. Like most of the Buffalo King, my identity is rooted here in my village. But today, the Buffalo King community is much more than villages steeped in the past. The soccer stadium, for instance, and the story of how it came into existence also defines who we are. I remember as a child coming up to our crawl just behind where we're standing, open up the gate and let the cattle come out and herd them out on to the grazelands. There's two rivers over here that we had to go through to get onto the Graceland. And that is how a lot of my life as a young man was lived. Traditionally, the Bafu King, like most Africans, were farmers who planted crops and herded cattle. Cattle provided our clothing, the milk we drank, we ate their meat, the cow down to decorate our floors and walls inside our houses, the hide for ceremonial drums, and when we died, the last shroud in which our bodies was covered for burial. In addition, cattle were used to pay Lobola for brides. Cattle were the source and means of storing our wealth. Despite this area still being mostly rural today, you will see hardly any cattle in the Royal Buffalo community. We have largely lost our agricultural way of life. 